Hi and welcome to this personal English video lesson number 5. I'm Maria Cristina and I'm the director of studies here at Personal English. And today I would like to explain the difference between the purpose and the cause in English and how to express them, which is connected to the topic that we dealt with last time, which is the difference between the use of the infinitive and of the gerund in verb patterns. Now, let's start to find the logics behind that, just as usual. Let's define what the purpose and the cause are. Now, the purpose per se is a goal that I pursue. And as such, it is viewed as a result that I want to achieve. So that's why we tend to use the infinitive to express it. Just like we explained last time. Now, by contrast, the cause is actually the reason for which something exists, and we express it through the use of for plus time, which is expressed by the gerund, exactly as we explained last time. Now, in the light of this, we can explain such differences as nice to meet you and it was nice meeting you, which is something that many non-native speakers always get wrong. And they say goodbye and um, um, they say goodbye to the person they're talking to and they usually say, you know, it was nice to meet you. Whereas in the correct form, it was nice meeting you. Now, what's the difference? The moment when I'm about to meet someone, what I want to say is that I'm going to meet this person and that is the result that I'm going to achieve in the future. So the correct form is nice to meet you. And I'm going to use it upon shaking hands. By contrast, upon leaving, I will look back at the past and I will, will say that it was nice meeting you, which means spending time with you, actually. So, upon leaving. Now, this may already be clear, but not crystal clear. This is going to clarify this distinction even further. Now, sorry to interrupt you, is a sentence that I'm going to speak at the moment when I knock on someone's door or right after knocking on the door, before interrupting the person. I apologize in advance because I'm going to interrupt the person and this is the goal that I set to myself. So, this is before interrupting. Now, after interrupting and upon leaving, I will not say sorry to interrupt you, but I will say sorry for interrupting you before leaving, which means after interrupting. Now, as you can see, the structure is different. We have four plus in form and in this case it's like explaining the reason why you're interrupting so this implicitly answers the question why am I apologizing well because I have interrupted you okay now let's also apply this to uh, the explanations about how some objects work and we may focus on two elements when we explain something. We can focus either on the user and then we can we give the script instructions about how the object works, or we describe the functioning of the object. If we focus on the user, what we do is something like, for example, if I want to explain how to use this marker, use the marker to write on the whiteboard. Now, what we're going to have is this infinitive following the imperative, which expresses the purpose, which is just like we said, the result in the infinitive. 
by contrast, if I focus on the object, I will say, well, the marker is used for writing on the board. So what I'm going to have is marker as subject, as used, and then for plus the for, uh, for, which means why is the object, uh, or better still, why was the object created in the first place? So once again, the question is why? Because we need it for writing. Now, let's also have a look at the difference between used for doing and used to do. Because even native speakers sometimes have a hard time understanding when to use which one. Now, used to write. I wouldn't use it in a context like this where I'm explaining or describing how an object works, but I would use it in a context like I used to write a lot as a child, meaning I used to write a lot in my childhood. Now, this is completely different. This is a past participle used here. This is a defective verb in the past form, which expresses a habit in the past. And this is followed by the infinitive. So this expresses a past habit, and it has nothing to do with this passive form, form here. And um, I am used to writing a lot as a yet a different form, which expresses not the habit in the past, but the habit in the present. Why such a different structure? Well, because here, just like I explained, we have a verb in the past followed by infinitive. Here, by contrast, the used is not a verb. This is an adjective. The verb here is the verb to be. And this to here is not a particle of the infinitive, but it's a preposition. And just like we explained last time with verb patterns, every time I have a preposition followed by a verb, the verb is in the gerund. I can also use this structure for habits in any possible tense. I was used to writing, even though in that case this would be easier to use. I have been used to writing, I will be used to writing, and so on and so forth. So, I hope that this clarifies a bit some doubts that you may have. And until next time, take care and be well. Bye!